Hello my friends, this is Wolfgang with Tools for Ascension. In today's guided meditation is going to be about releasing ghosts. We will cover the following points. So, what are ghosts? Why are they here? Where do they hang out? And uh, how can they attach themselves to me? Uh, how do they affect me? And how do I know that I have ghosts affecting me? And how do we deal with them? And then uh, finally uh, the guided meditation attempting to release them. So traditionally the idea of ghost, you know, has been put down in, you know, recent probably 50 years, you know, as a superstition of naive, uneducated people, you know, or denigrated as around the campfire entertainment. And, you know, was also used as a staple for horror movies, you know, <laughs> generally of the B or C genre. So, uh, and then on top of it, you know, many of us grew up on TV series like Scooby-Doo, you know, where pretty much every episode showed again and again and again that so-called scary ghost encounters uh, just all had a very natural explanation. And uh, actually, you know, in reality, uh, most people can tell stories about their encounters with a ghost, you know, or spooky presences, you know. And, uh, you know, many of us have been visited, uh, you know, by their deceased loved ones at the time of death, you know. So uh, many of us have had uh, encounters with those kinds of things. It's just not uh, spoken about publicly, right, because it is shamed. So interesting social engineering, isn't it? So ghosts, in my opinion at least, you know, affect our lives more than we think, and uh, many times the negative thoughts that come into our minds or the negative emotions, you know, are sent by ghosts. Even most light workers are affected by ghosts, and uh, helping them to pass on, you know, um, this ghost, you know, into uh, a higher consciousness, I, I think, is a major part of my spiritual counseling, you know, with very, very fast results. So, first of all, you know, what are ghosts? Uh, most uh, of you have heard of out-of-body experiences, you know, doing surgery or accidents, you know, or just while you're sleeping. And, uh, you know, where, you know, people float uh, above their body and um, can observe what is going on and uh, even hear conversations and see details they could never see from the vantage points of their bodies. Um, but they cannot really interact with the 3D spiritual physical reality and uh, most people don't see them, right? And so that is actually already a, a, a ghost body uh, with the only difference that there uh, is still a connection to the physical body, you know, which is generally called uh, the silver cord, co silver cord. And uh, but once the connection is broken, one cannot get back into the physical body, and uh, that is a time of death. <coughs> so, um, people that came back from the uh, death experience, um, you know, uh, the near death experience, are all report an accelerating feeling of feeling free. You know. Uh, most of us carry a lot of subliminal pain, you know, in their bodies all the time, you know. I mean, after a good massage, you know, you feel free and floaty and light, you know, uh, because the constant physical pain has been diminished. So not feeling your body anymore is an even stronger and accelerating experience, you know. 
And then once people realize that they are dead, uh, many visit their loved ones to say goodbye or to check out, you know, check them out out of curiosity, see how they're doing. And uh, then many people report seeing a tunnel of light, you know, super bright light, or their loved ones, or guides, you know, angelic being, and uh, then are taken to what is called heaven, or let's say like a higher vibrational state, you know. And then there's also a school of thought out there claiming that the white light is a forced reincarnation trap, you know, but that is a whole other topic and we will deal with this later in, in this meditation. Uh, so, and then, you know, there are people that at the time of death do not want to go into the light, you know, or follow their guides, you know, uh, if they can see them, you know, for some reason, uh, you know. So, they stay in what is considered the lower astral realm, you know, and that is called a ghost, you know. They are uh, in a way, a subtle energy imprint, you know, from the emotion and mental memory complex that still resides, you know, in the ethers and let's say in the electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, and some of them, you know, are thousands of years old, you know. And uh, probably some of you have heard of uh, phantom pain, you know, where a limb has been lost and you can still feel it, you know, feel pain there, though it's gone. And uh, how it can be released through certain meditations, you know. And ghosts in many ways uh, have a similar phenomenon, you know, in, in some ways. So why are they here, you know? And so in general there is a good reasons why ghosts decide to stick around in the lower astral. And, you know, that is, again, where most of them hang out, you know, depending on their desires. Like, you know, some of them are what's considered ancestors, you know, they have an invested interest in the family and they stick around, you know, to see what happened to the beloved grandchild and uh, maybe give advice or protection or, you know, just uh, uh, such types. And, uh, you know, this could be aunts, grannies, etc. Then, you know, there are also uh, another category I call the pious ghosts. You know, these are like uh, deceased monks, nuns, renunciants, you know, from different tradition that consider themselves, you know, your spiritual counselor. You know, on the downside, they're still stuck in their old prejudices, you know, and outmoded, outmoded conceptions, you know, of their systems. And so they, <laughs> they uh, in general have a lot of influence on your life and not always that good and desire. You know, another class of ghosts are the hungry ghosts, you know, that crave things that they cannot experience, you know, in the lower astral plane, like sex, you know, booze, drugs, like heroin, you know. And they will use your body like an amusement park, you know, or a brothel, you know, uh, if they uh, can get into you and take over and just influence you like that. And then the another class is those, you know, they stay around for revenge, you know, they try to harm, you know, through emotions and thoughts that they either project on, on you or on people around you, you know, so not to maybe uh, stir up a fight with your wife or with your husband or with your business partner and, you know, egg him on with negative thoughts about you, you know, all kinds of things, you know, depending on the level of that ghost. Uh, and then there are like all lovers from past lives, you know, and many, many times they do not agree <laughs> with your love life <laughs> and are a great nuisance in relationships. So now where do they hang out? 
you know I mean hospitals is like a major point you know where a lot of people die and get lost so uh, very dangerous to be in hospitals especially when you're down you know in the waiting room to, you know chances to pick up somebody is quite high you know graveyards of course you know and uh, you know some people are attached to places of their trauma like battlefields where they got killed and died you know or the apartment where they got murdered you know or the house or farm that they built and loved and um, you know just want to be there that's where they were happy you know or whatever they were most attached to like you know the company they built or the treasures that they buried you know or again you know loved ones that they cherished i have encountered all this i mean it's very interesting and uh you know some ghosts they hang out you know where their most favorite recreational drug is being consumed like uh, places of intoxication like the, the crack house the brothels the bath you know uh, wherever the action is <laughs> and then uh, some ghosts you know inhabit your body and uh, some of them you know are follow you around on your in your vicinity you know and some of them follow you for many lifetimes so uh, then the next thing is how dare they how do they affect us you know so first of all you know all ghosts even the benevolent ones you know have to suck suck a life force or chi or ru or prana you know from humans uh, because uh, you know they cannot generate it themselves and they have to you know and once they suck the chi out of an area or out of you you know one feels cold and exhausted you know so this is uh, one of the telltales you know of the presence of ghosts you know and suddenly you know it gets cooler you know and um, they also affect us through uh, their diseases you know and especially when they uh, reside in our bodies you know uh, we feel their lower back pain or their neck pain where they got choked to death or their head got chopped off you know uh, or they broke their leg suddenly our leg starts hurting uh, so that's very very common and, uh, and uh, they also you know affect us through their thoughts and emotions and uh, are also probably part of you know our internal dialogue too and so yeah some people you know are sad for no apparent reason you know all their life or timid and uh, this or that and you know it is actually you know the the ghosts that were traumatized in a certain way that you know those emotions we still experience and you know again some of those uh, ghosts take advantage you know of our vices and satisfy the appetites through us you know just again using your body as an amusement park and all <laughs> you can eat buffet <laughs> And especially, you know, when they died, uh, starving, you know, um, it's just, there's a great desire then. And uh, so then those all lover ghosts again, they really can make a big mess, you know, of, of your present relationships. Uh, many of them don't approve of your partner because they're, of course, jealous and, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> This is never good. <laughs> I have rarely seen <laughs> any ghosts that are s that love their partners so much that they want them to be happy. You know, it's uh, generally not working. And uh, so, <sighs> some ghosts, you know, follow us from incarnation to incarnation, and you know, and their desire for revenge and possessiveness. And somehow, you know, they're like uninvited and most likely undetected guests, you know, that even reside outside or inside our energy fields, you know. And in generally, they attach themselves to us through the dark spots in our light body. You know, these dark spots, uh, let's say, represent traumatic experiences 
uh, like emotional or physical wounds from, from this or uh, past lifetimes. And, um, you know, this is something where they can hook into. You know, there's a weakness in the, in the force field that you have, you know. And so, in, in principle, you know, that you should understand, so uh, ghosts, you know, uh, like uninvited hitchhikers, you know, uh, they try to get into your energy field, you know, especially, uh, you know, if originally you are, have, you know, ha high energy, and of course they love this, but they can get into you, you know, when you are low vibe, you know, low energy, you know, it's like saving you very sick, you know, or uh, very depressed, or very intoxicated, that you, you know, barely remember anything. Or you have a you know very traumatic experience you know maybe you get dumped on prom night in front of everybody and, and you, you know don't get out of bed for three days <laughs> you know? uh, that's a good chance you know you get possessed or you know car accidents also um, or when you get very angry very very angry you know. Um, that opens you to this lower vibration, you know. Also, you know, anesthesia, uh, which is a form of intoxication, um, you know, ghosts can inhabit, you know, very easily. You know, and then you have a squatter in your body. And so, uh, some other ghosts, you know, just happen to live in, in the space that you're also living in, you know, like a previous tenant in, that lived in your apartment, you know, that you now occupy. And they just keep on, you know, going through routine in this apartment. And there's nothing to do with you. They're maybe not interested in you, you know. And, um, you know, some people uh, like uh, their ghost, you know, for company, you know, for entertainment. They have, you know, dialogue. And, of course, you know, the crazy guy in New York talking to ghosts, you know, a uh, stereotype, you know, is a good example of that. <laughs> you know, and uh, some appreciate, you know, their ghosts, you know, for the powers they give them. You know, some help them to be more organized, you know, or to stand up for themselves. And, you know, this may be a good willing ghost, like aunts and, and, and this and that, you know, they're trying to help. And um, some ghosts, you know, have been sent, you know, by magicians or malevolent uh, people, you know, to hurt you. And, uh, you know, so, and some of those ghosts that sent to hurt you have been pressed into the service, and some of them uh, are volunteers. <laughs> so, how do we know that we have ghosts? So, uh, one way is, of course, you know, to uh, use a pendulum, you know, and uh, to find out if you have a ghost. And uh, for maybe for some of you, it's best, you know, to do the guided meditation, you know, with your eyes open and just ask the pendulum. Uh, but, uh, you know, you should uh, watch my pendulum video before you do that or who really know how to use a pendulum. And, um, you know, then, of course, you can also ask for kinesiology, you know, which is like muscle testing. Uh, and, you know, you can, of course, uh, do your own research there. And, or, you know, you can ask, you know, uh, your own high self, you know, when you are in connection with the high self, you know, and this is kind of what we are doing <laughs> and um, so many of us you know have grown up in the company of ghosts you know and think that uh, you know these ghosts are part of their own persona and uh, for instance you know uh, we have been always sad you know or anxious you know for no obvious reason and that could be the emotions of a ghost that we are feeling uh, it is much more obvious when we pick up uh, new ghosts, you know, and, you know, the symptoms, you know, show, you know, if you have sudden new pains or diseases appearing in your body, you know, without any good reason, you know, 
and uh, this is uh, most often experienced you know uh, by many many people that as soon as they pick up a ghost suddenly their neck hurts more or, you know suddenly their, their knee hurts or their hip hurts and there's no reason for this to hurt suddenly you know another one could be a change in personality so whatever since ever uncle willy had that surgery you know he's a completely different person <laughs> eats differently, <laughs> he talks differently, you know, you know so uh, different habits, right, different, yeah, so that's a telltale sign, you know. Uh, yeah, so a again, you know, change in eating or even intoxication habits, you know, also in some cases, you know, changes in sexual preferences, you know, or identity. I mean, and in some cases, you know, when a person really gets taken over by a strong personality ghost, you know, from the opposite sex, you know. Uh, it can happen that they, uh, you know, get this person to do a sex change operation or something like this. And uh, so that's kind of very sad um, if that happens. Uh, because of the permanency of, of operations, right? So I would always check before you do anything like this, whether it's your own soul that wants to do so, or whether it's just a ghost, you know, talking you into it. Right? It's definitely worth it, <laughs> checking this out, before you spend all this money. Um, so also, you know, another sign is that suddenly, you know, you have lower energy levels, uh, uh, because, you know, you have to sustain, you know, with your life force, you know, those ghosts that are riding on you. And, of course, now, you know, you're probably scared and think, you know, so, Wolfgang, how do we deal with them? And so, you know, there were traditional methods, you know, like uh, banishing, you know, doing a banishing ritual, but, you know, that's a specialist, you know, thing, and... <laughs> kind of weird, right? And, uh, and of course, there's also the uh, prayer, you know, that you pray to higher forces to clear you from those. Uh, or charged amulets, you know, or symbols, um, you know, uh, or uh, substances like sulfur, uh, or like things like that raise your vibration, like amethyst, uh, you know, or incense or smudge or anything, you know, with a violet vibration is kind of helpful. Like, um, let's say certain oils, you know, neem, neem oil or peppermint oil or rosemary is also very potent. So then also sounds like firecrackers, you know, have been used, you know, so that's, you know, the Chinese way of clearing a neighborhood of ghosts, you know, gongs, big gongs, the bigger the better. Conch shells, very, very potent. You know, I love the conch shell. Um, you know, horns, you know, like uh, those uh, big ones they use in Tibet or like uh, from a ram, you know, they're all um, uh, causing like a sinus uh, vibration, a wave, a standing wave. And they are, are quite unpleasant, you know, for some ghosts and can drive them out but in generally only temporarily, you know. Uh, so I said temporarily because most ghosts will come back, you know, once the smoke has uh, settled, <laughs> uh, so to say, and many of the ghosts following us, you know, are aspects of our past lives and they are suffering unnecessarily. So these methods of smoking them out you know, are neither permanent, you know, nor very compassionate, you know. So, therefore, you know, over my years, you know, I have developed, you know, the following method, you know, to bring them, you know, to the loved ones, you know, in, in heaven, into the higher vibration, you know, or um, back to their soul, you know, or back to source, you know, to Godhead. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so in this guided meditation, you know, I'm, I'm given this, this is a very powerful meditation, and I'm given this out for free. 
you know, to assist humanity, you know, to liberate itself. I mean, this is so necessary, you know, most spiritual teachers and healers, you know, don't even mention it, and it is so essential, you know. Uh, and it, it is such a very valuable guide of meditation that probably it will affect you, you know, with very profound positive changes in your life, you know. Everybody watching this video so far should do this meditation at least once, you know. Even if you think that you are not affected by ghosts, you, know, you will be amazed. <laughs> yes, you will be amazed. So also be very careful, you know, especially if you are sensitive, you know, make sure maybe you have a day to rest afterwards, you know, to integrate all this and make sure you drink a lot of water after this. You know, because the effects of, you know, the release of the clearing, you know, can be quite strong for you, you know. Um, most of you also will probably feel the presence of the ghosts during this meditation. And some of you will be able to see them, you know, especially, you know, how they leave and when they leave. And uh, some of you will be better off using a, a pendulum, you know, and following the meditation, uh, let's say, with uh, lights, <laughs> with eyes wide open. So, and the release of the ghost is experienced by many as an energy that is moving up, you know, through your neck, into your crown, and then, and then above, you know, which is, uh, you know, this can take a couple of minutes, you know, sometimes it's just lightning fast. And then, you know, once they go through the so-called pearly gates, you know, uh, go to the next dimension, you know, do you feel a, many of them, you know, see or feel a shower of sparkly light, uh, you know, you may uh, feel a tingling or goosebumps, you know, uh, that's, uh, you know, generally a very nice experience. Uh, many of you will probably cry uh, when you release parts of you that were tortured or otherwise heavily traumatized. Um, please do not suppress these emotions, you know. Let them manifest, you know, and uh, go. <laughs> and uh, then you're done with them. You know. So don't try to run away from this, you know. And you will have more energy, you know, because less cheese also being stolen from you, you know. Uh, plus, you know, the expansion of your energy body, you know, will rise your vibration. So, as a result, you can expect to feel lighter, you know, pretty much right away. Uh, kind of as if a heavy burden is being lifted off your shoulder. Uh, some physical symptoms like neck pain or other pains may fade away amazingly fast, you know. Uh, there will be also less mind shutter and uh, more peace. Uh, so to me it feels as if an uh, emotional gray noise is being turned off. And there is no more constant emotional agitation or tension. <laughs> so, you know, sit comfortable in an office chair, you know, and balance your body so that everything stacks up nicely. Uh, it is uh, very difficult to enjoy bliss, you know, when your back hurts uh, or when you are slumping. You know, so use earbuds or headphones to cancel out uh, outside distractions. Do not uh, drive or operate heavy machinery while listening to this meditation. And uh, smile like an idiot and reside in your heart. Uh, you will not have access to higher dimensions, you know, unless you vibrate at a certain love frequency and so also you know breathe at a pace that you can hear the air following through flowing through your nostrils like
that's a good pace. Mm -hmm. And you do not have to repeat any of my affirmations, you know, just think or say Amen. Uh, you know, uh, when I say Amen, so, but please mean it. You know, it's just, it's your intent that counts. It's your life. You know, it's, I'm not your daddy or your guru. You know, it's your life. It's your intent. I'm just helping here a little bit, you know. And uh, also be in a childlike state of innocence, you know, doing the guided meditation, you know, pay attention to uh, what pops, you know, into your awareness, you know, just, and the thought comes, you know, and just, you know, pay attention, do not judge or try to rationalize at the moment, you know. You can always do that, you know, at the end of the meditation. And uh, so, uh, and then generally, you know, within a few seconds of saying amen, you know, you probably have a reaction. You feel or see, you know, things changing. So, I invoke uh, absolute supreme being, you know, source of everything, the infinite consciousness, infinite love, to into our presence now. And we ask for the Supreme Being, not imposed this like Anunnaki or other intermediate beings, just the real thing. And we ask that everything that happens in and from this session is going to be for the highest good in divine harmony with the most benevolent outcomes and that we are completely protected. You know, that any ghosts that will be invoked, you know, uh, do not kind of cannot keep harming us anymore. Amen, 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 amen. And we also ask for the presence of our high self, of our inner child, of our spirit guides, and our star tribes where we incarnated right now, and which are coming from unconditional love. Our higher dimensionals coming from unconditional love that are supporting the human ascension and Gaia in the third and fifth and higher dimensional aspects and of course Milky Way galaxy. And we ask that there's going to be no deception that everything that happens in and from this session is going to be for the highest good in divine harmony with the most benevolent. No, no. Now, please smile like an idiot and send, shapeshift your spine, your legs and your arms, you know, through your fingers, you know, into Mother Earth. Ah, she's conscious, she's aware, she's smart, she knows you through all your incarnations and she loves you unconditionally. You are like a child to her. So just like run those roots into Mother Earth and they go joyfully just like puppies running off into the forest. Uh -huh. And now as if you're drawing her love through a straw, you're drawing her love through those roots, you know, into yourself, you know, draw it over your heart, into your head, and then on the exhale, you know, out the top of the head. Let it spill down over you and through you, through your shoulders, your heart, your arms, hands, legs, feet, deep into the earth. So just take a love all the way in and exhale all the way out, letting the love and your love flow back into her through those roots. Smile like an idiot. And enjoy this love that's flowing into you. And through you. And we ask it that it and give permission that it cleanses our bodies on all the different levels. This is waves of loving chi 
that are flowing over and through us now. Amen. And while we keep breathing and enjoying this love and healing, we ask Source and Archangel Michael to please remove any Draco, Grey, or other predatory races, cords, and devices from every level of our being now for the highest good and divine harmony with the most benevolent outcomes. Amen, 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 amen. And keep breathing and observe the energy shift, how it becomes lighter, clearer. Some of you will start to straighten out the spine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now on the exhale, we imagine that you uh, run this love from Mother Earth into your heart and that there you have, you know, your choice, a rose or a lotus bloom. That's first a bud, but as you're running this love from Mother Earth into it, it starts to bloom and open up wider, bigger, more beautiful. And it just keeps growing and growing and growing up. And we invoke the presence of Milky Way Galaxy above our heads, like where the ceiling is with most people. And we connect this rosebud or lotus bud with the Milky Way Galaxy, with all the beings that love unconditionally. And we open up to the divine nourishing love from them now. Amen. And we also connect with the Milky Way galaxy this consciousness, this big female consciousness. It, for us it's kind of close to God, for us humans. So just extend you know, your head like a laser beam to the core of Milky Way galaxy and also draw her love into yourself. On the inhale and on the exhale, you send your love to her. And as you're doing so, you open up to your higher dimensional awareness. And now you start inhaling this love as a liquid loving light into your heart. And there you use it to dissolve any pain or darkness that you can detect. While you smile like an idiot. You know, the sweeter you can smile, the sweeter the love that will come and the faster the healing in your heart. And you just keep this flow of energy going from the heavens, having love to clear your heart. And now <laughs> you add the loving energy from Gaia and just keep pumping it from both sides simultaneously. It's not so bad, it's, not, it's pretty easy. And just keep creating a strong force field in and around your heart. Make it glow in the dark. And now we ask for a protective energy that is very unpleasant to ghostly predators due to its high vibration to be brought into our heart. And now we asked for a violet light that will be a great armor, a light armor, into our solar plexus and also into our heart and to create a sphere. And the sphere with every exhale becomes larger as we're pumping this love and purifying energy into it. And expand it gradually to an egg-shaped bubble 
that surrounds us up and down, front and back, all around us. It is iridescent and just beautiful, vibrating this high frequency spiritual energy in love. And we feel safe like in a cocoon in it. And now we ask our high self and spirit guides to spin this eggshell so nothing dark can attach to it. Now, amen. And now we ask for another egg shaped sphere that overlays this one. And we asked our guides to counter-rotate that one, making a super strong barrier to the dark. Only love and light can come through now. Amen. And now we strengthen these counter-rotating fears through our breathing from our heart and solar plexus into them. While you smile like an idiot and breathe like a bellow. And now we ask for the presence of the most skilled and loving volunteer ascension teams for each entity we are going to call. Amen, amen, amen. And we ask for spiritual security to make sure that there is no abduction that there are no imposters, that there is no soul slavery or forced reincarnation or false light tunnels, etc., etc. Now, Amen. And now you send love of gratitude to all those beings that came to assist you in ascending your ghost now, Amen. And you ask also Archangel Michael and all the Sanjin teams to stand by now, Amen. And we command now all the ghosts that are affecting us to step forward so we can see them or feel their presence now, Amen, Amen, Amen. We ask for the presence of all the ghosts, also of their loved ones, you know, in case they're also still on the astral, you know, so they can bring their family members and other loved ones that are still with them, so they don't have to leave them behind. Amen, 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 amen. And now, dear Ascension teams, please tell and show these entities that they are dead, and why the higher self chose to live a life that this person just experienced, and how they're affecting the timelines by hanging around the lower astral planes during this time of ascension. Show them now. Amen. 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 And now, please show them how much they will be welcome and accepted in heaven, you know, the higher dimensional planes, and how happy they will be being reunited with their loved ones. Show them now. Amen, 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 amen. And also show them how they can bring other loved ones that are ghosts with them too, and how happy they will be meeting their higher aspects. Show them now, amen, 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 amen. And show them how they will also positively affect their timelines, especially at this time of ascension. Show them now, amen. And in comparison, show them the timeline that they will experience and if they stay earthbound. The big timelines to <laughs> show them now. Amen. And those that are sex addicts, you know, all lovers, you know, please 
show them how much better you know the love making is in the heavens you know how much more full spectrum enjoyable and how more beautiful those bodies going to be show them now amen and those of you you know that have done mistakes you know that stay back because they feel guilty you know they have hurt people uh, you know, they're very regretful, they're ashamed of what they did. Um, to those of you, you know, uh, we learn through trial and error. As humans, we do not know the future. So, uh, you know, it is forgive yourself and learn from your mistakes and do not do them again. You know, guilt it will just open you up to the dark side and turn you away from the love of the Creator. You know, if you feel guilty, you do not want the love of the Creator and all the love that is around you. And you're not really a tool for the love anymore. So that is very sad. So, you know, just give up your guilt to those. You know, ask for apology. You know, you're sorry, otherwise you wouldn't be, you would be in heaven right now. So, and, you know, we also ask them, all bodies of you, so masters of you that were sinners, to come forward and do testimony now. Amen. <laughs> and those that are addicted, you know, to alcohol and other drugs, you know, we ask some old bodies of you, you know, that uh, can come down, you know, and uh, tell you about the heavenly stuff there. <laughs> You know, ask about Soma Ras. <laughs> you know, amen. And uh, those that are staying back, you know, for revenge, you know, to settle scores, please, dear Ascension team, show them, you know, how much has already paid back, you know, to the suffering that, you know, they caused the others, you know. And uh, show them how they're actually creating more bad karma by sticking around. And, uh, you know, also show them, you know, how much the victims have learned their lesson. Let's say become more compassionate, etc., etc., you know. And, you know, uh, so for those in the meditation, you know, please apologize, you know, if there were slaves that you had and abused or others, or if you tortured. You know, or you betrayed or offended people. You know, or you probably experienced this is in your own life. You know, the trials you have, you probably did to others. So, just assume this right now, and apologize. And if the energy shifts, you know, you you're done right. Okay, amen, 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 amen. And now I address the ancestors. You know, and past life ghosts that want to live through us, that want to, you know, do their agendas through us, you know. Um, please show higher ascension team, show them the damage they're doing by diverting people from their dharma, from what they incarnated for, you know, to do in this lifetime. You know, and invoke their higher self, you know, and so that they can come and join their high self and actually contribute to the life's mission. Show them now. Amen. And now I invoke the pious ghosts, you know, your yogis and uh, monks and renunciants and uh, fakirs, etc., etc., uh, that are staying, you know, on the lower astral. You know, you probably know that you should be in the higher vibration. So we asked for your enlightened masters, you know, to come down and educate you on this. And if there's none around, you know, we ask the ascension teams to educate you, you know, of where you're most effective, of where, you know, you're going to be most divine and the highest tools, you know, for the divine, you know. Uh, show them now. Amen. Now I'm addressing, you know, the trap ghosts, you know, that were trapped through magic or ritual, you know, like headhunters do or like pharaohs did, you know, to their stuff. 
or like uh, it was done in many ceremonies, you know, they are, you know, they are tied you to them to be exploited, you know, the dark forces did this a lot. So we like to uh, have Archangel Michael to please clear them from any of those spells or false promises that they did or false uh, contracts that they did to clear them now, amen, and to liberate them now, amen. And now we ask all the loved ones, you know, from all those ghosts here, and even their pets to come down from heaven and to greet and hug them, to love them and to celebrate, you know. And for even the parents, you know, maybe there are some lost babies to come down, you know, they are hooked up now, the ascension teams, you know, they make sure of that to come down and pick up their loved babies, their loved kids, or anybody else that got lost. Now, amen, 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 amen. And you all kind of please smile like an alien. <laughs> and so observe how the vibration is shifting. And when you're ready, you know, we ask their loved ones to escort them into the real heaven, the real higher dimension, reuniting them with the higher aspects now. Amen. And we ask souls to make sure again that there's no deception, that they're really going to the highest place. Amen. 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 And now you start breathing into your crown and smile and observe the energies that are shifting and you might experience an upfloating of energy, a releasing of darkness from the lower body. Many of them will see energy moving, purple moving up. Many of them will feel as if a heavy burden is being lifted off your shoulders. Just breathe into your crown chakra, which will kind of create a pathway for this ghost to ascend. Uh -huh and smile and oh yeah and when they make it through the heavenly gates into the nether next dimension the next dimension the higher dimension uh, you probably will see light coming down feel light coming down some of you may tingle all over the body feel light some of you will smile and uh, some of you will cry out of love, some of you will cry out of relief. Uh, some of them will come back and just greet you again with their angelic form. Yes, it is beautiful. So just stay there. And uh, now we look if there's any ghosts left behind. Amen. And if there's some, you know, we ask again more help of a sentient team for those. And we ask them also why are they staying back. Mm -hmm. And keep asking them till you're satisfied with their questions or with their answers. And apologize or do whatever is necessary to bring them to heaven. If you cannot, you probably should book a private session. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And for any beings that are still stuck, you know, we ask the Ascension teams to keep helping them and to make sure they do not affect us in any negative way. Amen, amen. And now we also asked volunteer ascension teams to install, let's call them heavenly airports for ghosts, you know. Um, you know, that, you know, well, those airports, you know, they have ascension services, you know, to help them get back into higher dimensional consciousness, you know, as guaranteed by absolute souls, you know. And so, we ask those ascension teams to please make sure 
that you know the airport it's called the ascension airports are like according to the culture you know of those goats you know uh, some of them kivas may be appropriate or sweat lodges you know for some of them temples you know or natural uplifting environments power spots you know or whatever you know does the trick you know and i mean you know we'll do it you know whatever makes them feel comfortable mm -hmm. amen 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 and we also ask for volunteer security teams to make sure that there's no abduction imposters slow slavery forced reincarnation false light etc etc none to those girls you know so we like to have the have we given the higher dimensions permission to uh, you know help ascend all those trapped ghosts from the lower assholes amen 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 and we also asked our own high self and spirit guides to keep sending all approaching ghosts ghosts that approach us to those spiritual airports from now on amen 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 and now i will count to three and you will be back with vacant day consciousness one and you will feel the presence of your room two and you become aware of your toes and heels and your solid body snaps into your fingers and three if you are wide awake fully present your subtle bodies are fully aligned now amen and you're also completely grounded so welcome back from this guided meditation i know it has been long but i have to say um, this is very 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 important there's not one client i have that does not get heavily influenced by ghosts uh, it's very strange you know it's such a phenomenon <coughs> and um, <coughs> if you are a seer you know uh, you might you know if you can see ghosts you know you might uh, dedicate maybe one day a week or a few hours a week or maybe once a month a time you know where you um, assemble the heavenly ascension teams and get all the local ghosts you know sent into the real heavens um, this would be a great service and uh, it would be also a great act of compassion you know for those ghosts and for ever the humans that they have been haunting mm -hmm. and of course you know this is uh, one shot shotgun meditation you just did and um, there are chances that you did not ascend all your ghosts that are affecting you to heaven you know and uh, so uh, much of the time you will have to do these guided meditations you know again not as often as you would have to take you know your pills or teas but uh, whenever you feel a need or ask the pendulum when it is time you know and you know if it's if it's too difficult for you uh, which is in some cases you know quite likely uh, you know, you can always book a Skype session with me, you know, uh, to cut right to the chase. And, uh, you know, you can also uh, please subscribe, you know, give thumbs up, you know, tell your friends about my videos, leave comments, and smile like an idiot, you know, and, you know, keep watching my videos, the different parts. You know, you learn these things, you clear whatever those things that. Uh, I'm talking about in my videos, so you will become, you know, a quite well-rounded uh, spiritual being. <laughs> you know, I love you, long time, namaste.